Hi, my name's Chris Cannons and welcome to OCAR. Today I'm going to be doing a review on my fiance's 2012 Mazda 2. Let's just get straight into it. All right, so I suppose I better start with the interior because it's, it's a real letdown. There isn't a single thing inside that isn't made out of petrified dinosaur or petrified dinosaur tree. <laughs> the entire interior is made out of plastic and not nice plastic. I mean, they've made some effort. They've made the steering wheel out of something maybe a little bit softer than the rest of the car, but honestly, it's, it's barely an improvement. And the whole top of the steering wheel from being in the sun has just disintegrated because it's made out of, yes, a slightly softer cheap plastic, but a cheap plastic nonetheless. And I mean, every single thing that you touch in here feels cheap. They don't, the panels, they don't fit quite right. And then they're also made out of cheap plastic. It's incredibly disappointing. I understand that this was a cheap car when you, and you can save a lot of money by not, you know, using nice materials on an interior, but this is just not nice to be in. Now, in terms of ride, it's actually not that bad. It's pretty comfortable, so you could almost forgive the cheap interior. Over potholes and over bumps, it's actually pretty reasonably comfortable. It's not so bad. It's got nice big pillowy tires, so it's not crazy. However, even though it has those big pillowy tires, a lot of road noise. There's not much sound insulation anywhere in this car. This car on the highway is really, really loud. It also has the five-speed manual, um, which I believe later on this car did get a six-speed, and I imagine that would make quite a big difference because this five-speed on the highway, you are doing like three, three and a half thousand RPM to just stay at highway speeds, and that my friend, is horrible. It is such an unbearable car to drive on the highway. I mean, look, you know, I'm used to cars with big engines, so I'm particularly sensitive to this stuff. You know, I'm used to having something that sits at like two, two and a half thousand RPM on the highway at most. Um, but this car on the highway really, really is quite loud. And I'm someone who gets quite irritated by, you know, road noise on the highway it really gets to me so i couldn't drive this more than a couple hours on the highway without getting really frustrated if that's not that big of a deal to you it's not that big of a deal to you and it shouldn't be a problem but i find it really frustrating where this car comes into its own though is when you get off the highway and you get onto what the english would call a b road because the dynamics of this car fantastic. It's got like a two and a half meter wheelbase and little 185 wide tires. So it's incredibly nimble. I mean, incredibly nimble. You know, along a tight, twisty little road, this thing feels amazing. It's got that short little wheelbase so you can sort of rotate the car quickly with a little bit of lift off and just get it pointed exactly where you want. In terms of like chassis balance this is a very very well balanced car on top of that mazda and their manual transmissions this is fantastic this little notchy little five speed feels almost as good as an mx5 shifter honestly i've driven a first gen mx5 and na and this shifter this is 85 90 percent as good as that and that was an awesome shifter so Mazda, they are just killing it with their manual transmissions. I just love it. I never have any gripes with this. The clutch is very short, I find, but that's sort of a symptom of it being quite a small car. I've found most small cars tend to have a fairly touchy clutch, but once you get used to it, it's really not a problem. I, it doesn't bother me after a little while. The other thing to think about with this is if you're young and this is your first car, which is a good chance this is what you're looking at, this sort of thing, you can get them for around five grand. This actually has a five-star safety rating. 
It might not be five stars now, but when this was new, this had a five star safety rating, which for a tiny little car like this is really, really good. And then just to add to that five star safety rating, it also does like six liters per 100 Ks combined. I think it's like 6.4. That is absolutely fantastic. I mean, I know we live in the world of hybrids where stuff says that it does like, you know, three liters per 100 Ks and little turbo diesels. But honestly, if you don't drive this on the highway, I do think you're gonna be getting down to like five liters per 100 Ks, four liters per 100 Ks, because that's what this is really designed for. And you know, that combined number is getting brought up by how bad this probably is on the highway. And uh, I just, it's so good. When you get in this car and you take it for a proper drive, it's just excellent. You take it on a narrow little B road, I just, it's amazing. The pedals are like the perfect distance from each other for a bit of healing and towing. So if you're looking at this as a first car, as a car enthusiast, I really gotta recommend it. It's dynamic, it's small, it's tight, it just feels so good when you hustle it but then it's also good on fuel economy. And if you do wrap it around a tree, which let's face it, if it's your first car and you are a car enthusiast, there's every chance you are gonna wrap it around a tree. It's got a five-star safety rating. So you probably will live. No guarantees. I'm not guaranteeing you're gonna live, but honestly, I just, I am astounded by how good this car is. And really genuinely, if, I had this and the Merc sitting next to each other in the garage, like my five and a half liter V8 performance car, like a proper super saloon in its day. And this was sitting next to it. If I was going anywhere with some tight roads, I'd be taking this. This is so much more fun to drive in those tight little corners where how light this is really comes into its own. I don't know what it is, but I bet you it's under a ton. If it's not under a ton, it's only just over. So it really, really is very, very pleasant to dive. Okay, so finally onto the styling. Look, I actually think they look pretty good. I think the previous generation kind of look better because they're like really boxy and look like a fridge on its side. But I think this kind of swoopy Mazda design does look really nice. I think these got a little bit weird looking later on. The newer ones, I'm not a huge fan of. And then the latest, latest ones, which are basically just a Yaris. I'm not a fan of that design, but I think this is, you know, still swoopy and aerodynamic looking without being really ugly. But at the end of the day, it's just an Econo box. Like it doesn't stand out in traffic. It just blends in, which is sort of what you want a lot of the time. This particular one does have some exterior blemishes, which I think is pretty obvious. The whole roof and a bunch of panels are missing the paint completely. I've got a feeling this was either left in the sun a lot in the Australian sun or left under a tree where lots of birds were crapping on it or something like that. But, you know, I think they got it for pretty cheap as a result. I can't remember exactly how much they did pay, but I think it was quite a bit below market value. And really, mechanically, this thing's really good. It's just aesthetically a bit banged up. And at some point, I probably do intend on fixing the paintwork and stuff, which I'll make a video about. So in conclusion, if you're thinking about getting this era of Mazda 2 for your first car, cause they are sort of in that first car money now, five grand. I mean, when my first car was like two grand, but a lot of, you know, inflation, all those things, you can't really get anything halfway decent for like less than three. And even that's gonna be a bit touch and go in a lot of cars. Four or five grand, you probably can find a decent one for four. I think this is a really, really good option for you if you want a really small, really nimble, fantastic first car. If you can get the five-speed manual, it's a fantastic gearbox. And I just, I really can't see any downsides to it. It's just fantastic. I think they even came in a two-door model if you wanted to be really sporty about it. But I mean, to be honest, I'm pretty sure they're about the same length, which means you're just losing two doors for no reason. You're not actually, I know that you sort of think, oh, two doors, it's sportier. I'm pretty sure it's just exactly the same car, but there's just like a stamp piece of metal there instead of an actual door. So I could be totally wrong. Maybe it does have a shorter wheelbase, but I don't think it does. They wouldn't go to all that cost. I think, you know, 
it's probably going to be exactly the same car, but with just kind of a different panel there. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And if you didn't like it, dislike it, and tell me why I'm shit in the comments, because I love that sort of stuff. And look, if you really, really enjoy it and you want to support me, we do have a Patreon. It's like $3 a month or something, and you get everything as soon as it's finished, every article, every video, as soon as it's done, it goes up on the Patreon, whether that's three days in advance or a month in advance. I don't have to work out thumbnails and titles and do all that stuff and stick to some sort of schedule on Patreon because I'm not sort of feeding an algorithm, so it's much more free and you get it as soon as it's done. And, you know, I'll also be opening up Patreon-exclusive merch and stuff like that at some point. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you don't want to do any of that stuff, maybe just click one of the videos that the algorithm pulls up at the end. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.